Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I'll be showing you a simple technique that's one of my favorites. We're going to create an x-ray effect using the falloff map type and a noise map in 3D Studio Max. It's a very simple technique. You can use Mental Ray or the Scanline Renderer or the renderer of your choice. So let's get started. I'm going to start off by creating an extended primitive, a torus knot, right here in the middle of my scene. And that's going to be our, our object that we test on. I'm going to give it plenty of tessellation since this effect works best when we've got lots of smooth geometry to work with. So I've set uh, 240 segments and 24 sides. So the next thing I'm going to do is click on my material editor and apply a new material to this object. Now what we'll need to do is apply an opacity map in order to make this material really show through in the render. I'll start off by setting the diffuse color very bright, close to white, and then I'll click on the opacity map and I'll assign it a falloff map. Right here, a falloff map. And click OK. Now that I have the falloff map in place, I need to adjust how quickly it falls off from perfectly opaque to perfectly transparent. We want that fall off to be pretty steep. So I'm going to create a new um, handle, a new node, and I'm going to drag it upward right here. Oops, actually we're going to want it down here. There we go. A very tight, very fast fall off, and you can see the, uh, the preview right up here. Now I'm going to select this and I'm going to choose Bezier Corner because I want this to be a pretty steep increase just like that. Perfect. Okay, now let's take a render and see what that looks like. It's looking pretty good. I like the way that this is starting to shade up. There are a few more things that we want to change to really get this effect right. The first thing is to scroll back up on this fall off material and under the black slot, the area that's perfectly transparent, we want to apply a noise map. And that'll help to give us a little bit more of that rough effect that we're looking for. And you can adjust some of the parameters here, like setting it to fractal, turning down the size a little bit, and then adjusting the output so that it's not too bright. You still want it to be pretty close to black. I might set this to 35% output. And then if I go back up to the original material, another neat thing that you'll want to do is under extended parameters, you want to set the advanced transparency to additive. Note this is a, a special thing just for the um, just for the standard material. So if you're using V-Ray, you might not be able to uh, to set this, or it may be different. Let's take one more render and see how we did. Now that's looking pretty close to what we want, but we still need to turn down that transparency a little bit, make it a little bit easier to see through. There's also the issue of illumination, so we'll want to set the self-illumination to 100%. Let's do that now. First things first, self-illumination to 100%. And then we're going to turn down that transparency just a little bit more. So under the noise map, I'm going to scroll down to output, and I'm going to change it to just 15%. Let's take one more render. Perfect. That's exactly the effect that we were looking to get. This nice, bright outline, a nice additive effect for areas that overlap, and the centers are just barely visible in the render. So there you have it. That's how you can create a very simple, editable X-ray material in 3D Studio Max. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.